Thanks, Donna. I've already done it. So we're on live. And if you could make me your co-host, I'll stay with you throughout the class. Thank you. Someone muted me. How you doing today, Fred? Good. <laughs> I'm forgetting I'm now. When I come in now, it's it, it's muted too on me. Yeah, they've had some uh, Zoom bombing. I was uh, yep. one the other. I was with a, a fuck you the other day. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you tell them you know what back because that's probably what I would do. <laughs> well, oh my God. you know, I Norman made a big issue about not screen sharing. Right. I haven't talked to him. About it. I said, you know what? People want to say something. They just say it. They don't have to screen share. Right. <laughs> you know, they probably won't even bother. You know, exactly. They can stand up in front of the camera if they want to do something obscene or something. I don't know. So because I like screen sharing. You know? Right. Yeah. It's, it's a chance for people to interact. Right. Hi, there. Hi. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Thank you. Did you have the last last meeting? We one meeting with um, name the art piece. Was that you? Oh, the name that masterpiece last mm -hmm. Friday. Yes, yeah, we did that. that did fun. you like that? Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, we have a good time with that one. Sometimes oh, okay. we guess some, sometimes we don't. We don't that's, no. why, that's why we're here, so we can bone up on Leonardo. That's so right. We're cheating. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. That voice sounds familiar. Ah. Yeah, uh, Christine was uh, in the um, the art history class earlier, and she said the same thing. She says, I'm going to make note of all these paintings. Take a screenshot. There you go. <laughs> I told her, you're not going to remember them on, by Friday anyways. I know. <laughs> it wouldn't be any fun if you knew them all. That's right. It wouldn't be. <laughs> Although there's definitely some now I am recognizing more now, now that we've been doing it. Yeah, there's always a few of those ones we never do get right. <laughs> yes, I know. Brugel. Or Brugel, Brugel or yes, <laughs> the, the elder. Oh, my God. Brugel, he gets us elder. every every time he gets us. I know. Mm. Yeah, we need. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> for whatever reason, we can't seem to remember his stuff. Either that or he just has really varied, you know, his pieces are very varied. So welcome everyone this evening for a, a little talk about Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, Sandy, can you hear me? Sandy? Yes, yes, I can hear you fine. Thank okay, you. Okay, good, good. And Ivan, 
Can you hear us? I just want to double check with some people that have, uh, see, make sure their audio is working. Ivan? Well, maybe Ivan stepped away. Hello, Harold. Welcome. How are you this evening? Good. How are you doing? Here. That's the You're great. here. All right. <laughs> Very good. All right. And yes, I can hear you. Oh, you can. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. It's Joan. Oh, Joan. That's right. You changed your name in the last right. class, too. Yes. Yes, yes. And Kim is here tonight to help us with it. Any, anyone have any uh, uh, technical issues or anything? She'll be in the chat, taking care of the chat room for us. So, all right, well, let's get started. I want to welcome everyone to get set up. We're seniors teaching seniors about technology. We also have social hours. Ah, this evening, we're going to talk about the life and the art of Leonardo da Vinci. My name is Donna. I was in the IT industry for over 30 years. I enjoy helping people. Uh, get over their fears of technology and possibly art history. <laughs> now you can get a um, request a recording of this class afterwards by emailing help at getsetup.io. And we do not get paid to promote any products. Um, no promotions tonight. Paintings are too expensive. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about Da Vinci's life, what it was like some of his famous works and his influence on art history. Does anyone have their, a favorite uh, Leonardo da Vinci painting that they love? Go ahead and speak up if you'd like. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That is definitely one right there. <laughs> That's funny. And it comes with a song. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit here about uh, his childhood. Uh, born in Vinci, in, uh, Vinci, Tuscany, in Italy. He was an illegitimate child. He was raised by his grandfather. He was the oldest of 12, but they didn't hold it against him. Uh, he, did, he had just really basic and formal education, nothing too fancy. Uh, when he was 14, his family moved to Florence, which was a great move for him because he got to study under Andrea del Vecchio. Now, he was a leading Florentine painter and sculptor. He was a student of Donatello, who was um, in the medieval period. Um, he did the famous uh, uh, sculpture of David. And he, he uh, Donatello kind of spilled over from the medieval period into the Renaissance period. So while uh, the young uh, da Vinci was there, he got to um, not only study just the arts, but he got to study uh, anatomy, uh, phys uh, anatomy, painting, engineering, all types of, you know, chemistry, mathematics. Artists back then, they really, they studied a lot of things. Uh, in, it wasn't just art. A lot of it encompassed it. And that was, um, and of course, engineering for him ended up being a big thing that he really loved doing. So that's what he studied there. And he remained there for seven years. And then in, um, Oh, let's let's actually let me. I'm going to play a little video for you right now, just to get a little bit, a little snip about uh, what Leonardo's life was like, and then we'll come back and we'll start looking at some of his paintings as we walk through his life. Leonardo was among the most important painters of the Italian Renaissance and the father of the High Renaissance style. Leonardo da Vinci was born on April 15, 1452, in Vinci, Italy. By age 14, he was apprenticing under the famous artist Verrocchio. 
One of Leonardo's greatest contributions to painting was his introduction of the idea of sfumato, which essentially means smoky and is a way of producing atmospheric perspective in paintings. Da Vinci became a master artist in the Guild of St. Luke at age 20, and in 1482 moved to Milan and began taking commissions from wealthy patrons. One of the earliest complete works he did was the Annunciation, which has that spectacular background that he had perfected. The most famous work and the most important one that Leonardo produced well in Milan was his Last Supper for the refectory of the Church of Santa Maria della Grazia. He left Milan in 1499 and traveled throughout Italy, working for a number of different patrons. Leonardo's 1503 commission for the Battle of Anghiari represented a high point in his life. It was a vast project, a fresco painting that would have decorated one wall of the Grand Council Chamber in the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. And Michelangelo was to paint the other wall facing. The project never came to be. During the early 1500s, da Vinci also began painting the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is one of Leonardo's most important works. It's today one of the world's most famous paintings. I can't think of any other work that has so consistently fascinated people. Leonardo da Vinci was a true Renaissance man. He's well known as a great artist, but in fact, he also made great contributions to foundations of science. He engaged in projects like designs to reroute rivers, urban planning, the creation of pedestrian streets in the centers of cities, all designed to cut down on the chaos of life around him. Leonardo went to Rome to work for Pope Leo X in 1513, and he stayed about three years. While there, he practiced dissections and laid the foundations for the study of human anatomy. He spent his final years in the employ of the King of France, producing works for him as well as for other members of the French uh, nobility. Leonardo da Vinci died on May 2nd, 1519 in Ambrose, France. Such was his stature that it was said he died in the arms of the French King. Leonardo is deservedly one of history's most famous painters. As the founder of the High Renaissance style, as one of the greatest naturalists who ever lived, he is someone who we continue to admire today. All right. So his apprenticeship lasted for seven years, and then he, uh, while he was working with Andrea, Let's talk about uh, the couple paintings that he did. The first one, we'll talk about the baptism of Christ. Now this one, they paint, since he was a student of Andrea, he, they did this painting together. Um, from what we know, he probably painted these uh, little angels, the children down here on the left side. And there is a, you know, there's folklore saying that when once um, Andrea saw um, da Vinci paint that he he couldn't believe how beautiful the painting was and that he never painted again. But that's not true. <laughs> he, he did continue painting. Uh, this is to show you some of the style at this time for the Renaissance. And the other painting that they and if anyone, by the way, has ever seen any of these paintings in uh, real life, go ahead and speak up if you want to talk about what it was like and what it looked like and, uh, you know, seeing it in person. And this is the Annunciation. This is another one. You can see that the, uh, look at the landscape in the back here, the smoky landscape. Definitely a style that uh, da Vinci continued doing in his uh, paintings, uh, you know, throughout his life. Again, he would have done this um, with Andrea, most likely. They did this together. He was how uh, old when he went to um, study with Andrea? He was 14. Oh. So when he got his studio, he was about 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Now he got his first commissions at this point when he had his own studio. 
And one of them was the altarpiece, which was supposed to be at the Palazzo Vecchio, which, by the way, this is what it looks like. Let me show you the picture of what this place looks like. Now, he never completed either one of these, uh, of the paintings that he got commissioned for here. And there's a lot of speculation as to why that was. Um, the other one was the Adoration of Maggie. This was for the monks at San, uh, at San Donato. And that painting, they do have, this is unfinished. And this painting has been, um, let's see, where is it at? Oh, it's in at, at, at the Afuzi in Florence. And it's been there since 1670. They've had it there. Now, when he was in uh, Florence, he got accused of sodomy, he and three other men. And at that time in history, that would have been punishable by death. But they all got acquitted because there, was, there were no um, witnesses. And so, you know, he was a, a perfectionist, Da Vinci. And uh, some believe that he left Milan because he just, you know, small towns. <laughs> he probably didn't like the image that was portrayed of him. And he wanted to uh, leave. Another speculation at this time, too, because he was supposed to paint the altarpiece at um, the Plaza Vecchia with uh, Michelangelo, and they did not get along. So some people also say that that was a little bit of a, a deal breaker there, too. So we'll never know exactly what happened. But what he, he did get a job with the Duke of Milan, and he went to work there. So when he worked for the Duke of Milan, he did several famous uh, things. Uh, one of them is The Last Supper. So let's take a look at uh, some of these works here. This is the Madonna and Child. And of course, the Last Supper. Where's the Last Supper? Sorry about that. There it is. Has anyone seen this in real life? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you'd like to. Mary, I see you're talking. I, I was just wondering. Um, we went a couple years ago to the National Museum of Art in Washington. I was wondering mm -hmm. if it was there. Um, I, I can't remember though, but it seems like I saw it somewhere. But I just, you know, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, I like the enunciation too. It's beautiful. Yeah, the, yeah, that one really does pop. Mm -hmm. um, the colors and everything. The colors, right. Yes. This is a little smoky too. Yes. And it is, you know, he had a, he used a different, um, he put, yeah, when he did the last, last supper, he was playing around with putting the oil paint on wet plaster. And it was a new technique he was using. And unfortunately, within 20 years of doing The Last Supper, it started peeling off the wall. Oh, gosh. So that, that technique turned out to not be a good idea. Hmm. So uh, that's why it's in such bad, um, you know, right. it just, it, it's in bad shape. That, um, I think you said it was a church that he painted the yes, wall. It's, yep, it's in a church. Yes. Was that, did he do the ceiling paintings too? Do you know? Um, not, are you talking about the Vatican or you're talking about this church? The one you just showed a few. Yeah, this, uh, I don't think so. Do you know Fred by any chance? Oh, Fred's not there. Oh, I was going to ask him because he knows a lot of, he's been, he's been to the, uh, he's been to see it. I think uh -huh. it's just this one wall. I think it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Th thank you, Fred. <laughs> 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 and uh we also have the salvador mundi now this i love the globe on this look at this globe oh. this is an, another one of the techniques he perfected wow look at look at how you can see right through it it's yeah. amazing and i like to kind of go through the pictures here because then they show here's some uh they did restore this painting 
In fact, this painting just sold um, hmm. in uh, 2017. Jeez. It sold for $450.3 million. It's the most expensive painting ever sold in a, in a public auction. Oh, my gosh. Now, this is how it appeared in 2005. Now, here it is after the cleaning. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the modern restoration they did with the new frame. Looks good. Great. Yeah. I just can't get over the globe how that looks. I can't either. I can't it shows either. you what conservators can do. Yes. Yes. I mean, I can't. I, I would be so nervous working on something like this. I, I don't know. Too. I don't know how they do it. I mean, wouldn't take much to get fired if you screwed oh up. Oh my set. God! You you know, yeah. You don't want some clumsy person doing this. Um, there's a nice up close. You can see. Look at the uh, the fabric. All right. And the hair. And the hair. Oh my gosh! The curl. And what's this one called again? This one is the. Um, uh, the, the, the Salvador Mundi. Salvador. And there's a nice, uh, this is a great up close of yeah. the, um, the globe. Wow. Oh, it's got the, the it's reflection just of the yeah, the, yeah, the reflection of the hand. You can just, you know, it's so transparent. Mm -hmm. And then here's uh, uh, one of his manuscripts. You know, he was known for doing so many uh, drawings and manuscripts thousands and thousands of pages of drawings he would do. This is some of the, he was, here he is practicing how he's going to do the clothing in the uh, Monday pic painting. You can see he's working out how it's going to drape off the arm. Hmm. <clears throat> now this is the school of Leonardo da Vinci. So this is a copy that one of his students tried to do. Oh. Now these are kind of fun <laughs> because the globe, the little, the ball is kind of funny. Now this one did pretty good job. Pretty good. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Wait until you see the, the, the D student. <laughs> <laughs> I call it the D student. So here's another one. Here's a follower doing uh, the same painting. Yeah, pretty good. Not bad. Pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Here's another one, follower. Yeah, that's very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, to have those pleats in there. Is it, oh. Yeah, yeah. They're, it looks a little plastic, though. It's not as good as the way Leonardo would do it. <laughs> you, you, you see the difference? The way the, yeah. you can see they're, they're a student. They're learning. They're yes. learning how to do the fabric. Uh, this one's pretty good here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the globe. Uh, yeah. Not it's, bad. Yeah. Here's another one. Another uh, knockoff. Yeah. A lot of people painted this or used it as an example. Here's another follower. This one's in uh, black and white. Their globe is not quite completely transparent. No. And then I love this one. This is the D student. <laughs> I actually can see the difference in the way they hold their fingers and the hand, the ball yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but this one, I just love this one. I, I'm thinking, you know, if I was his student, <laughs> this would be mine. I, I would say, okay, I can't do trans transparent. <laughs> It's going to be a would, white ball. I would have turned that into like an eight ball, a billiard ball or something. <laughs> yeah, That's really. I was <laughs> or a baseball, because they didn't have baseball back then. I know. It's like, you know, do something with it. Make it a globe. I don't know. <laughs> Looks like these has had a little too much munchies at night, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. It's a little fat. That's <laughs> a little Italian. It could be a bocce ball. Oh, that's true. You're right. Yes, yeah, a bocce ball. Mm -hmm. I just, I, <laughs> this one just cracked. I can't, I can't get enough of this one. Um, yeah, so this one's kind of funny. So, you know, the, he did have, you know, students. 
Um, and the bronze horse statue. We need to talk a little bit about the bronze horse statue because he was supposed to. Um, one of the big things he was going to do when he went over to Milan was this. He was going to do this massive bronze statue of a horse. This is going to be the crowning achievement of his whole career was to do this horse. Well, France invaded Italy. And uh, that was the end of the, the horse because the bronze went towards uh, military, you know, the guns and whatever they mm. needed the bronze for. Oh, wow. what a shame. Now, he, he did make a giant, um, like a clay version of this thing because he had already started working on it. And um, it ended up being used by the French soldiers for target practice. So they. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what you do in bronze casting. You make an original in wax or in clay. That's right, Fred. You know how to sculpture. Well, I was, uh, my ex was a sculptor. We used yeah. to, she used to do bronze. So mm. I've been to, yeah. I've been to foundries where they cast bronze and stuff. So, yeah. So that's what happened to his horse. His horse got all shot to pieces by the, <laughs> the soldiers. Um, he also went to Milan. He was going to, when he was there and the other projects he was going to do for the Duke, he was going to do, um, you know, he always, everywhere he went, he had engineering projects because he really was part artist, part engineer. So he had all these war devices that he was always uh, sketching and planning out. And he was going to do cannons, some smoke machines, uh, portable bridges, armored vehicles. Um, so he had all kinds of ideas uh, for for military. First helicopter, actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm. He had all kinds of ideas for the. Um, yeah, that. Mm. And everywhere he went, he would do engineering product projects. He, it was always something he did on. I don't know which was on the side. Was it the painting or the engineer engineering? Yeah, there's some stuff. museum that has mock ups of the stuff he designed. Oh. I forget where it is. Uh, you know, all um, these, like you say, helicopter models and all that stuff. Yeah, they do have a Da Vinci um, museum. I think it's in Milan. Yeah, in Milan, you think so? Yeah. I, I, I didn't. I saw the Last Supper was there, but I did not. I didn't go to the gadget. I think you're right. I didn't right. either, but I think it is in Milan. Ah, yeah. uh, Mona Lisa. So he went to Venice after the French came in and invaded. He went off to Venice, Venice for a little bit. And there he worked primarily on some uh, projects. He he designed some naval defense systems for the city. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's always you know doing this type of work. So he really was a real. It wasn't just the drawings were sitting there. He really was an engineer, and he did engineering projects. I think he even did sort of like stages and stuff like that. I don't know what's the name of that the product. You know, where you make backgrounds for mm. stages and stuff like that. Oh, really? Okay. I don't know. I, and I, yes. I, remember I think that. he worked on the canal system in Milan also. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. He did canals, bridges, yeah. um, whatever, you know, was needed. He was usually the guy that people were calling to do this type of stuff. So you kind of, you got a twofer with him. You've got art and you got yeah. some, some work done. Yeah. <laughs> He's also a master. He was a master with optometry before it was really wow. uh, created. I didn't know that. I saw an exhibit oh. of some of the mock-ups things. Yeah. Well, oh, what'd you say with what? With optometry. optometry. Oh, optometry. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he he had a, he had a lot of knowledge. So he was in Venice just for a little bit, and then he went back to Florence. And when he went back to Florence, he had some more artwork that he did, the uh, Virgin and Child of, with St. Anne, oh, I've seen Mona that. Lisa, and the, the Battle of Agnari, which he did not finish that one. So let's take a look at these paintings to see what they look like. Now, this one's digitally altered. Mm -hmm. The little lamb there, mm -hmm. and his smoky backgrounds. Yeah, very signature for him. And then the Mona, whoops, Mona Lisa. How many people have seen the Mona Lisa? We didn't see that, did we, dear? I have. I have long. I I got to see her a long time ago when you could actually. I have close to her. Right. 
I have and, as well. And it's a lot smaller. Yes. <laughs> it's not then, as, I don't know. I thought it was about what you expected. It's maybe about 20 by 30, I'm going to say, inches. It's certainly larger than the, the portrait that the National Gallery has in Washington. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, let's see. And Leslie, you got your hands up. Do you want you want to say something? Leslie? Oh, I'll, I'll meet yourself. Uh, no, I was just raising my hand that I'd seen the Mona Lisa, but I also saw uh, the Last Supper in Milan when it uh, was mm -hmm. being restored. And so uh, you could go to the church, which was outside of Milan. Mm -hmm. and, and then um, we were very close to it. We were like the you know, two people uh, besides the people restoring it in the room. Mm -hmm. Actually, in Milan, a lot of people don't realize he had a house right across the street from the church where he lived with a huge garden. Oh, and, really? Yeah, beautiful. And the gardens are still there. Wow. The, the yeah. house has been used by, you know, followed centuries by other families. You have a pretty good idea of what his garden was like. Right. But he, he lived right across from the church where he was painting the, the, um, the uh, Last Supper. Well, you know, with the Last Supper, too, I mean, he was a perfectionist. And I think this is why a lot of his artwork um, didn't get finished. I mean, you know, the typical you know procrastination maybe the uh the you know when you feel like you're not going to be able to do it well enough um, when he was doing the last supper he would go in spurts so he would paint crazy for about 48 hours or more and then he would walk away from it for a few days so that's that was his work pattern just kind of on and off well the biggest problem is everyone knows with the last supper is he painted it in oil he was one of the first people to really experiment with oil painting and be, be, as opposed to fresco. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that the oils just did not, uh, fresco will go right into the plaster and last. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The oil just didn't. But on the other hand, he was a, that's, he, you can get effects with oil that you can't get with, with fresco. Right. But not right. on plaster. Yeah. 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 The fresco, it, uh, the pigment bonds with the plaster. What's yeah. amazing is, is the photographs of it during World War II and the bombings of how they went in and it was protected by sandbags and all. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of the, of course, it's not in a church, it's in the, the, the dining hall of the, of the friary, but um, it, it, three of the walls were, were, were bombed and gone and, and it managed to survive. So it's a yeah. great story. It is pretty amazing because I think I had some pictures of that. Um, and that church was, it was a mess. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. not. Got hit. I mean, it's been restored as well as they can, but probably about half of it's missing. Mm -hmm. And it has been for a long time. Yeah, yeah, it really got hit bad. And it is amazing that it survived. Well, I mean, what's missing is because the paint just didn't adhere. I mean, it started. Well, yeah. It, it yeah. started. Within 20 years when we did it, it started to fall apart. Yeah. 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 Hey, you know, he tried something new. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and this one, the uh, the Battle of um, in, in Nari, uh sorry for my pronunciations, um, uh, Rubens, he did it. He, he looked at the uh, drawings from um, the drawings that uh, Da Vinci left. And this is his portrayal of that. Well, it's funny because there's a there's an article that uh, art historians have drilled through a fresco in Florence, and they found un, behind it there was like a blank space, and they 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 sampled some of the paint, and they think it may be his some of his work on the Battle of Anghiari, Leonardo's. Oh, the unfinished. Mm, yeah. Yeah. See, this is what the type of drawings that Rubens was working off of. Like these are the group of riders. 
Yeah, so you, have have to have a, you have to have that before you put that up on the wall to do your fresco. Maybe not those particular ones, but. Right. Yeah, so this is the, what he worked off of those and then he came up with um, his finished product here. All right. All right, so he went off to Milan to work for King Louis and for the French, the, the governor of Milan. He did mainly engineering activities here. Uh, they were getting rid of the French out of there, um, and he did take off to Rome for three years. He worked for the Pope. Um, during this time, um, for the Pope, he was doing the dissections, which were against the, uh, the Catholic Church. Uh, but that's how he learned a lot about human anatomy. I want to show you some of his drawings that he did for anatomy. This just shows you a little bit of his uh, sketches. Wow. When he gets into the skeleton, very detailed in the tendons. Here's another one with the shoulder. Wow. I mean, we're, this is 1500s. Yeah. <laughs> Muscle. It's not like you had an MRI machine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, scan that body. Um, it's pretty amazing. This looks like something that they would have in the regular medical text today. Yeah. Yeah, if you ever like uh, cut up a chicken or something and tried to figure yeah. out what that leg looks like, it's not that easy. It's not exactly. all that well defined. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that's a good analogy. <laughs> it's kind of like that, I know, to come up with something like this. Here's some uh, more of his you notes. Say he, um, he did that for the Pope dissecting? Um, no, I don't think the church frowned, frowned against that type of thing. He was doing that. Um, I'm not too sure. Fred, do you know why he started? Well, he, he's always very curious about anatomy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Michelangelo did the same thing. He dissected also. Hmm. Oh, he did? Okay. Bodies back at the same time. Hmm. Was yeah, I don't know. Nostra I'm sorry. Nostradamus also around that time with the body and all the drawings. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's probably the only, here's the heart, sketches of the heart. Embryo. Embryo, yeah. And that's that one there. Um, more, um, I'll, I'm going to give you guys these links so you can take a look at them. Yeah, definitely all his sketches he left thousands of pages of drawings and sketches that he had um, did a lot of work in that area all right and so in his later period um, this is where he worked for the king of France this was a this was a nice gig for him because he was getting old at this point uh, he was considered the first painter and engineer of the French royal court. Mm -hmm. And it was really a do-nothing job. Um, he was good friends of the king. And he, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, some of the paintings here. This is John the Baptist. You can imagine how interesting a guy he was to hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the, the king or Leonardo? The king hanging out with Leonardo because Leonardo was like so. He must a, have been very interesting. I'm because sure he was. He, he had, knew everything about everything. He had so <laughs> many ideas. You know, exactly. this is the St. John the Baptist. This is one of the last paintings. Hmm. Um, wow. But yeah, pretty much he just was, uh, you know, living Polymath. there. Polymath, yeah. Yeah. 
um, until he died. Um, and he died in 1519. Hmm. I want to play for you a little um, video that talks about these inventions that we, we mentioned about earlier. You can see uh, some of this. He had really some great ideas. So these are the top seven inventions. Not going. Oh, it's not going? No. By coiled springs. Oh, there we sorry. go. Also there it is. Here we go. I'll start it over. Hello and welcome to Now You Know. These are my top seven picks from Leonardo da Vinci's inventions. Number seven, the self-propelled cart. The self-propelled cart was one of the many inventions that Leonardo created dealing with locomotion and transportation. Leonardo's cart was powered by coiled springs and it also featured steering and brake capabilities. When the brake was released, the car would propel forward. Da Vinci's cart design was so ahead of its time that its exact workings baffled scholars until late in the 20th century. But in 2006, Italy's Institute and Museum of the History of Science in Florence built a working model based on Da Vinci's design and, to the surprise of many, the cart actually worked. Number six, the machine gun. The way Leonardo da Vinci saw it, the problem with the cannons of the time was that they took far too long to load. His solution to that problem was to build multi-barreled guns that could be loaded and fired simultaneously. While one set of cannons was being fired, another set would be cooling and the third set could be loaded. This system allowed soldiers to repeatedly fire without interruption. Leonardo da Vinci's design for the 33-barreled organ is generally regarded as the basis for the modern day machine gun, a weapon that didn't really develop for commercial use until the 19th century. Number five, the parachute. Da Vinci made a sketch of the invention with this accompanying description. If a man had a tent made of linen of which the apertures or openings have all been stopped up and it be 12 braccia, which is about 23 feet across and 12 in depth, he will be able to throw himself down from any great height without suffering any injury. <laughs> Daredevil Adrian Nichols constructed a prototype based on da Vinci's design and tested it. Despite skepticism from experts, da Vinci's design worked as intended and Nichols even noted that it had a smoother ride than the modern parachute. Number four, the robot knight. Designed for a pageant in Milan, which the Duke had put Leonardo in charge of overseeing, the robot knight consisted of a knight suit filled with gears and wheels that were connected to an elaborate pulley and cable system. Through these mechanisms, da Vinci's robot knight was capable of independent motion, sitting down, standing up, moving its head, and lifting its visor. Using several different da Vinci drawings as blueprints, roboticist Mark Rochim built a prototype of the robotic knight in 2002, which was able to walk and wave. Number three, the diving suit. Originally designed as a way of warding off invading ships, Da Vinci's diving suit would allow men to engage in a little underwater sabotage by cutting holes in the bottom of the enemy's hull. The leather diving suit was equipped with a bag-like mask that went over the diver's head. Attached to the mask around the nose area were two cane tubes that led up to a cork diving bell floating on the surface. Unfortunately, the design, complete with breathing hose and glass goggles, wasn't needed at the time and would only find itself submerged in planning stages. Number two, the armored tank. The precursor to the modern tank, Leonardo da Vinci's armored car invention was capable of moving in any direction and was equipped with a large number of weapons. The platform was covered by a large protective cover reinforced with metal plates, which was to be slanted to better deflect enemy fire. The motion of the machine was to be powered by eight men inside of the tank who would constantly turn cranks to spin the wheels. Despite its elaborate design, da Vinci's tank has a major flaw. The powering cranks went in opposite directions. This made forward motion impossible. Scholars suggest that da Vinci, a pacifist at heart, may have inserted the flaw intentionally to discourage the war machine from ever being built. And number one, the flying machine. One of da Vinci's most famous inventions, 
The flying machine, also known as the ornithopter, ideally displays his powers of observation and imagination. It had a wingspan that exceeded 33 feet, and the frame was to be made of pine covered in raw silk to create a light but sturdy membrane. To power the wings, the pilot would pedal a crank connected to a rod and pulley system. The machine also had a hand crank for increased energy output and a headpiece for steering. Unfortunately, while the flying machine may have flown once it was in the air, a person can never have created enough power to get the device off the ground. You are no longer ignorant concerning these matters. Now you know. I don't know. that, that the, uh, the diving suit. I don't know if I'd get in that one. Um, but that was very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, he really was a very smart guy. I mean, you know, to think to think of these things in his in his time period. Uh -huh. they're, just riding, they're riding <laughs> horses. I mean, <laughs> to to I mean, you know, no electricity, had, no, no, no electricity, nothing. It's like where was his reference point? What was he looking at? What was giving him this idea? Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's amazing to be thinking of these things back then. I think it's considered genius. <laughs> yeah, he was a genius for sure. Exactly. Um, yeah, there's another, we were talking about, um, his museum. Let me show you this here. There is a Leonardo, um, I think this is the one you were talking about that has all his little, um, oh, yeah, it may be. Is it in Florence then? It's in Florence. There it looks like oh. a bicycle here. Yeah. I mean, so the, yeah, bicycles this is, eventually been, I mean, like 400 years Actually, later, this is so. pretty, you know, this is actually really good. Look at that. He's got it down. That's exactly what a bicycle is today. Exactly. Like, perfect. Um, yeah, so this is in Florence. This is the museum. And oh, it's just a block from the Duomo, right in yeah, downtown. Yeah, just right down there. So if any yeah. next time you're in there, go check it out because you can see all these different inventions. Oh, I guess this is the uh, the tank, huh? It looks oh, like it. Yeah, opened up. It took me a while to realize what. Yeah, because they said the yeah. gears are opposing. Uh, this looks like a cannon here. I mean, he had some some of his things. He talked about hydraulics, which that's pretty. That's pretty thought, advanced stuff. And there's the Archimedes screw, which could be used to move stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's pretty brilliant stuff. Actually, the Archimedes um, screw is the basis of um, when. That's how windmills pump water in. Um, in the Netherlands, the yeah. burns and then yeah. the screw moves the water up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep, for pumping water. That's part of the hydraulics feature. I'm wondering if all his engineering projects, if he was actually using this type of thing. Makes you wonder, because he because yeah, he was always pumping water. He, he did water projects. Could be, yeah. And there's his flying bird. Amazing. Yeah, and it looks like they <laughs> show the gift shop. I bet this gift shop is fun. <clears throat> yeah, so next time you're in Florence, go uh, check that out. This is his possible birthplace in in uh, Vinci, Italy, and then some more of his paintings here. Actually, that painting right before is not his it's his teachers it's brochure right but mm -hmm. these two angels he did right faces on and they said that after he did them the teacher just said i give up <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the the teacher who at the time was one of the great painters of the time really right just Baracchio. like oh my yeah, God, Baracchio. you know and this um, this one's unfinished which i that nativity that you just showed is, is that's the mag ad adoration of Maggie. That, that much varnish. That's in the Uffizi, but it's never finished. But it's interesting in the, how active it is. You know, it's just it. Um, this would have been really pretty finished. Yeah. 
there was a lot going on in here. Yeah. But I mean, the, the point was, is that actually there would have been a lot going on. Yeah. You can you see know, all the, it's always shown as a peaceful scene, but there's a lot. Yeah. The shuttle, you know, when, when all this stuff was going on around him as well as the, yeah, the adoration of everybody showed up. Oh, hi, Melinda. I, I knew I recognized your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was late. I, I had a sprinkler problem out in the front yard. Oh, oh I yeah. Poured it out. And... Look at the, the landscape in the back here. I know. The mountains. It'd now, be this so is... easy to just put nothing back there. Is this his? Or is I don't this, know. this is a student of it? This is not that's not might, a well, it might be a student. They have them down here, but I think it's someone else. Now, this is him. This, they think this is his first um, true landscape. It was not finished. Yeah, he, he didn't do too bad sketching. Now, this, yeah, this put another one. This would have been very cool. Look at the, they got some castles yeah. up on the mountains here. That's the one in Washington. I love this one. Yeah. yeah. yeah that oh my is God. Beautiful. This that one is just. Beautiful. Yeah, that was about, hair. about 15 by 15. That's a pretty good size. Or 18 by 18. 18, yeah. 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 Oh, inches? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, oh, that's a good size. So, and I'm saying that the Mona Lisa is about twice her size. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, so this is really small. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if you've seen her, which yeah, I assume you have. Um, and that's the one that's got the painting on the back of the of the laurel. Right. That's this one's in the Hermitage. Oh, that's Another a sketch. Those were um, the. Those are some of his early things. That that he was actually at the hanging. With, that's when um, Lorenzo de Medici, that, you know, after the overthrow, they they captured oh. the guys and unhung them all from the um, as an you know example. And, and Da Vinci was there and um, this, you know sketch it in person. But he this was I think it looks like earlier stuff. Fourteen seventy nine. Yeah, I think it's before he went to Milan. Well, you've had the dates. I... Yeah. I, um, you're asking for when he was where? Let's see what dates I have here. I think 1482 is when he went to Milan on your slide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was fairly young when he left home and became an apprentice. Yeah. He was 14. Yeah. This is in the low. Yeah, and then the um, National Gallery of um, in Britain has, mm -hmm. has the a similar one. He did two. Oh, yeah. They're oh yeah, the very version. slightly different. Yeah. Do you remember what the differences were between the two? Um, a little bit of the coloration, and I'm not sure if Saint. Well, let's see, got Saint John the. Um, I think it has to do with the pointing of that one figure and the, they're, they're very the close here. Yeah. yeah. It would be interesting to see if you, to see the two of them next to each other. Those are big are good size. I should say. Are they? Yeah. yeah. Here's another sketch. Portrait of a musician. I don't think that's Da Vinci though. Not be. It's a code take. Well, we don't know yeah. that. That we don't know if that's the name of the painter. Or, could take well, a, that's a, that's yeah, a it, museum, it, That's a gallery, must, picture gallery. That's what that means. Right? Oh, picture, that's what it gallery. is. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Picture gallery, because there's a pinacoteca in the Vatican right. too. Right. Okay. You're, I'm learning some things. <laughs> Another famous yeah. drawing. 
Yeah, I went through the Sistine Chapel in 2019 for the first time. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you, it, isn't it overwhelming? It, of course, that's Michelangelo, but still. It, I know. I, it, I, I, I know it's Michelangelo, but it is over. It is overwhelming. And yeah, if it, you've you seen can, the movie, The Two Popes, uh, yeah. it's quite interesting. Yeah, the whole, just walking through, you know, because they walk you through the whole, all the galleries to get there. Oh, my God. It takes, like, forever. If it takes hours. There, it, and by the time yeah. you're there, you're like, whoa, you've seen so much. Exactly. <laughs> if, you're claustropho if you're claustrophobic, you might not want to go there when it's busy. Well, actually, <laughs> it's there. It, every Friday, they, they have an open, um, you can go at night. Um, um, the Vatican lets you in. In fact, it's cocktails and drinks you can really yeah mm -hmm. and then you get to go through at night and it's not quite so crazy except now all the tours are getting on to that you know so you think oh this is gonna be a nice time to walk wow. through and then all of a sudden there's groups of 20 there's tons of people there yeah. yeah we were there in october and we were the first group of the day and like i say by the time we got toward the end it was getting pretty I'm glad we weren't at the back of the pack because it was really getting crowded already by the time we kind of got to the uh, Sistine Chapel. In interesting. I was there in October of 2019 also. In oh. fact, I had, you guys well, might we have been in, in the same crowd. Yeah, we may I have was, been bumping arms or <laughs> shoulders there. Well, I was in St. Peter's I was at the front. Actually, some it was almost like a terrorist got in, a guy with a knife. Ooh. Got in. I got it all on video. Wow. <laughs> really? The front scared me to death because you didn't know what. It, and slowly, how in the world he got through all the metal techs and all the checkpoints you had to get in. Yeah. And gotten in the back. Wow. And they had, it must have taken 25 guards to, and they had to slowly try to surround him. But he was. I think he was an unhappy Catholic from some crazy guy. Crazy <laughs> from guy. Some, well, he was from some um, what do you call it? Um, Cult. Uh, no, for, like from Poland or something. He was ranting on raving about something, but he had a he had a weapon about. Wow. He could have done a wow. lot of damage. And wow. I, I was about. I'm glad I missed that. Feet one. away from him when he. I'm glad I missed that part. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my yeah, god. that's scary. And I, yeah, I went back to see. I, well, was it, but it was not on the news. It was kind of interesting. Oh really? Quiet huh. enough. But huh? Yeah, because they can. I, I know when I went there, it was during the day, and there were just a ton of people. It was all yeah, uh, pretty crowded. But it's really great seeing all of the artwork. My God. And, and yeah. Da Vinci, by the way, has one painting. St. Jerome is in the Vatican. It's the only painting of, uh, okay. of Da Vinci. Yeah. I think, aren't there own? There and like it's not finished. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess there's, there are barely 10 Da Vinci's, aren't there? I mean, he there's did not, not that, do very for, many oils. He didn't complete very many. Um, I think he left more uncompleted um, than completed. Did you cover yeah, the pronunciation the... in the beginning? I... Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm we yeah. did. Wrestling yeah. and sprinkling this one. I'm soaking wet here. <laughs> the sprinkler one, huh? <laughs> well, well, someone had replaced my had broken and replaced my sprinkler head, which meant I didn't know how to get it to work. And we'd had this uh, first time in six months, I turned it on. So. <laughs> Uh, anyone else have any comments or uh, questions at all about Da Vinci you'd like to bring up? <clears throat> all right. Well, I want to. Oh, I, guess, I guess the one one thing I found interesting when I was in um, Florence, Da Vinci and of course Michelangelo came along after, but they still were alive at the same time. Mm -hmm. And. Um, they, the two of them did not get along well, interesting enough, big, even though they big were, egos. you know, <laughs> big egos. Yeah. Big like egos. The, and also, I think it's Michelangelo. Michelangelo did not get along with Raphael either. But and, uh, Da Vinci well, said on the, <laughs> the, um, the, the panel to decide where 
they were going to, uh, to hire um, Michelangelo for David and where they were going to place David after it was oh. as far as outside mm -hmm. the um, Pontevecchio. Hmm. It's hard yeah. to be humble when you're like a genius. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, when you think about it, these guys were really just contractors. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm you would hire the smartest guy in the room. I'm the smartest guy in the whole country. <laughs> I mean, you, you you would hire a painter to do a fresco. This is what it was. And they were all getting hired by the Pope. And you had like at the Vatican, you Raphael was painting the Raphael rooms at the same time Michelangelo mm -hmm. was doing the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. So you're, you know, you have a lot of egos walking around yeah. there and everyone thinks they, they deserve the, you know, whatever gig you got. And exactly. they, they mm -hmm. fought over job, you know, painting jobs and it was all commissioned. Well, yeah. A lot of people yeah. don't realize that Botticelli did a lot of the, the um, murals on the walls of the Sistine Chapel were, are Botticelli's. Yeah. 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 Everyone's so busy looking up. Right. right. Yeah, I know the walls yeah. are great. Yeah. It's not easy being the number two guy in the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean. Remember, <laughs> but I saw the Sistine Chapel back in the, the 70s, about 1974. Is that before, the, before it had been restored when it was. Oh, really my hard. God. I never it saw it before, but I've seen pictures. The, well, restora the restoration is fabulous. And again, it goes back to what they talk about how good frescoes are. They last for thousands of years if they're properly, and they clean it apparently every year. They uh, clean because of the humidity from all the people going in there. But mm. fresco mm. is just so fabulous how those color, when they cleaned it, people said, oh, it couldn't have looked like that. You know, you oh, guys no. faked <laughs> it or something. Right. But it no, did was, look like that. No, they <laughs> The art world argued because I remember back yeah. when it was being done, and that's there was right. A huge, it big, was a big the art world do was over really the divided thing. about it, and a lot of the art that's world right. upset what was being done because it was exactly. like convinced that they they had removed a lot of uh, Michelangelo's original dark shadowing yep. and things. Mm -hmm. and they were yeah. convinced that there was no way the colors could have been that bright. Exactly. But mm -hmm. it's exactly. been pretty well established that no, that's yep. it. That it, it was all um, well, it's it's all the smoke and oil from Well, and fresco from, from is so people. hard that people, a lot of people, do, especially in modern time, don't do fresco because it's just so damn hard to do it. Yeah. Especially on your back up in the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Donna, can I say something about sure. that Sistine Chapel? When, sure. my husband and, when my husband and I went quite a few years ago, um, there was an incredible amount of Japanese tourists. And we could, I mean, they were a lot, just a whole lot. And so we asked um, somebody and they said that the Japanese, I guess Sony mm -hmm. had, was, I think they, they sponsored the cleaning of the Sistine Chapel. So oh. it took, yeah. And so when I guess that's how all those Japanese got over there because they wanted to see it, what their <laughs> what Sony had done. Oh, oh man. <laughs> it was amazing. I I couldn't believe it, but I think Sony was the 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 um the company it, that it was one of but there, there were a lot of sponsors on that. Yeah smart yeah, move though. So, smart yeah. move yeah. for a corporation. Yeah. Yeah. They, were part of <laughs> they were probably <laughs> waiting in line to donate money to that project. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Yeah. yeah could you imagine? Does mm -hmm. anyone yeah. remember when it was restored? Was it in the it's been the last 20, I think it took them like 25 years or something. It was a long oh. project, I think. Is it in the 80s and 90s? I... Yeah. Yeah. That's, was, a, that's a lot to clean. Yeah. Oh, you know, they have to do it, you know, they have to yeah. do it though. Like you said, it, it's all the, every, all everyone's breath and just everything in the room and all the time. I, I don't, I don't know that they could be doing it that often because the amount of scaffolding it would take. No, I saw a re they did a recent show on it. I mean, what they do is they have some kind of a, I forget what it is. They, a it's moving like thing. A sheets of plastic or something they put up there and it kind of absorbs the moisture and they kind of peel it off. It's not like restoration, but they have a technique they've developed. And I think they do it like, I don't know if it's every year or every five years or something, but yeah, they, they, they stay right on top of it because they know. You know, they know what they need to do. 
That'd be interesting to see because I don't know how they could get up there without scaffolding, and they don't. Well, they have scaffolding. Oh, they close it down. Yeah, they have scaffolding. Yeah, yeah, they close the whole thing down. I don't know where all the details is here. Mm -hmm. See if I can see something about it. About yeah, they must not like having to close it down, though. The tourists must not like it. No. Yeah, well, it's a big money maker, though. Too, they yeah. want to maintain it. Yeah, to have it down. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, that's the room that the um, they meet to choose the Pope, also. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Where, exactly. where they right. send yeah. the smoke. Oh, here's up the, the here's ceiling. the thing. On, I'm seeing uh, restoration and controversy. Uh, restoration was complete and reopened in 1994. 94. Okay. 94. Thank you. Okay. And was that the first one they had ever done, or had they done one before? Uh, I I think that's the first one in the modern era. Yeah. Mm. Well, because part of the problem was it'd been, quote, there'd been so much paint put on it by previous restorers mm. that, that having to separate what had been, quote, restored before and get right. it back to the original and separate it. And there, a lot of analysis had to go on. Oh, geez, well, the, I can't. One of the big questions was there's in fresco, there's like three techniques. There's dry, where you just have a dry wall and you put... Then they have one that's kind of medium, and then one is really wet. And there was some controversy that maybe Michelangelo kind of, you know, worked in the middle. But I, apparently after the restoration and stuff like that, it was so established that he didn't work in a secco and dry. He was working on wet plaster. And yeah. I mean, that's why it takes forever to do that, because you can only do as much as you, you know, one square meter or something is all you can do in one day because mm -hmm. the plaster dries. So you've got to be mm -hmm. working while it's wet. And I mean, it's just, the whole technique is just amazing. It really is, which is why yeah. we don't see a lot of it anymore. And he got called out to do the chapel ceiling because the ceiling that was there had a crack in it. It had kind of like a starry night theme, like stars, nighttime. Uh, that's what was on the ceiling, and they had a big crack, and that's when they called him. He was actually in um, France, I think, or somewhere, and then they had to call him back. Um, well, he's primarily a sculptor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then when they called him, I don't think he realized he was going to do the ceiling either. I think he was going to do something else there, because that's why he wasn't very happy to find out that he was going to be doing a ceiling. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but yeah, so that's why though, because it you know the ceiling had this big crack and they had to restore the whole thing. I, you know, there's a, the agony in the Michelangelo sometime because he was a genius too, and he oh yeah had a lot of peripatetic uh, kinds of interests, mm -hmm. architecture. You know, he designed yeah. a lot. We should probably do him next. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be a good one. Mm -hmm. that'd be good. I like the triangle of him and Raphael and Da Vinci. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I was just reading here, and it said that uh, the restorers made a decision that they would uh, use a solvent that would remove, strip the ceiling down to its imp paint impregnated plaster. That means anything that wasn't done in one fresco wouldn't, you know, wouldn't remain. So it would just so be what he did. Yeah, they would just, that stuff would just be erased. Well, it turns out it was almost all brain fresco. Mm. That's wow. how they that's how they determined. That's why it looks so good, is because that pigments chemically bond with the plaster. And then they just mm -hmm. never, they don't fade, especially when they're inside. They don't fade, they don't peel off, none of that stuff, mm. which is what uh, you know Leonardo ran into, we talked about earlier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good the thing plaster, they didn't. The plaster does crumble. So, I mean, if the plaster crumbles, the painting. Yeah. Is... They get well, a crack someday. They, yeah. That's why you have to, like you say, you have to have it hopefully indoors away from the weather and, you know, try and control whatever you can control. Yeah. No, no big earthquakes. <laughs> yeah. All of that stuff. Yeah. yeah but I mean, yeah. they've got frescoes in Pompeii. 79 AD. They're digging those suckers up all the time and they look they look pretty good. You know? It's amazing. 
they're 500 years older than the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> That's pretty amazing to survive lava, <laughs> lava and earthquakes. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, while well, we're over. I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. This was lovely having this discussion. Thank you. It was fun. It's sure. always fun to, to discuss all the art here. Mm -hmm. uh, other classes we have, uh, Famous Art of the Vatican. I haven't seen that on the schedule in a while, but it uh, does come around from time to time. We have the Colorful World of Chihuly. Famous Women in Art History. You'll see that uh, class from time to time where we'll talk about the women and what they have to go through just to get their paintings hung anywhere. <laughs> I missed your jazz thing. Didn't you have a jazz thing? Oh, we had Claude Bowling last night. We had a good time. I don't oh. know if anyone anyone here went I missed, Yeah, I knew about it and I missed, I missed it somehow. Oh, we had it was fun. Um so that will be uh that'll they'll replay that one. So look for that also. Cause okay. It's um Claude didn't you, Bowling. Didn't you yeah. have your art 101 today? Yes, we had the history 101 uh right, really so good. It was so oh, good. oh yeah, Nikki was there. Yeah, I was there. Oh, it was great. I oh, I'm glad it. you liked it. Loved it. All right. You might there have to you throw go. you might have to throw in an interest group on sort of art or something too. We could just really <laughs> I <laughs> mean, go. yeah, what uh, what would you, what uh, that's good. We can talk about that. What what kind of class would you guys like to have? I mean, would it be like a history class? Art yeah, history? Or? I don't know. It could just be kind of art in general or something for art aficionados mm -hmm. or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. We just did yeah. the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> no, but I mean, people could talk, you could talk about modern art, impressionism. I mean, yeah. you could talk, you know, I talk about all kinds of different art, for mm -hmm. sure. Pick, pick an artist or pick a period or a, a style yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah. as the yeah. topic for the night. Yeah, that yeah. could be fun. That could be mm -hmm. kind of fun. Yeah. 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 Um, and Fred no, and I'm not volunteering. I was going to say, Fred, I'm just ready to volunteer you. <laughs> I was going to say Fred and Melinda. This sounds like a great project. I think Melinda would be a good project. Melinda would be Melinda. fantastic. Yeah, she, she sounds has, like she has the background. She has the art history background. Much exactly. needed here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go, Melinda. There's an opportunity. I'll Melinda. tell you, I do, I do an interest group. And, you know, the good news is it doesn't require much preparation <laughs> as opposed to a class. So yeah. you yeah. just have to kind of be a moderator. Oh. Oh. So, so Melinda, what do you think? Are you, are you on board? Yeah, yeah, I could do it sometime. Yeah, there you go. There you, you go. Do, you I'm could do it like twice a month. Travel twice. stuff right yeah. now. So yeah, you could do it like twice. Oh a yeah, month. Oh yeah, you could. Yeah, it can be flexible. Yeah. 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 So yeah. why don't you? Uh, you have my email, right, Melinda? I know. I've got to an answer. You can email. Uh, <laughs> yeah, been, you can email I've been me. Thinking about it because I've been thinking about well, you know what we could do. So you have a lot of knowledge with the art history. That would be oh. really great. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. I, yeah. I don't mean to to, to um, unmute too much, but it's oh no, I am. I am. Hey, I'm glad you enjoyed yeah. what I have to share. So we no, need some I professional I, people. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I hey guys, I studied music history, so hello. <laughs> this is what you. This is what you get. Well, I, yeah, and I I'm a big a, computer nerd. So <laughs> <laughs> I was a chill. I actually, I was a um. I'm an art, I'm an illustrator. So I used to do, um, used to work for Hallmark. Um, did uh, did you really? Oh my God. Wow, the Hallmark cool. artist, and then I did children's books for a while. Cool. And then my husband wow. was an artist. So there um, you go. But uh, all know, right. Well, you definitely have to co contact me because we have a drawing club starting next week. Okay. <laughs> we might need your skills. Oh, I don't <laughs> know. I'm pretty rusty. You know, people don't realize that. Drawing and art is no different than music. It's something that almost any learn. Practice, practice. Practice, 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 practice. Yep, exactly. Okay, I got it. All right. Have a drawing Bye. Class? There's a we're, drawing. We're gonna, yeah, we're starting a drawing club next week, next Thursday. Oh, that sounds fun. What time, Don? Um, it is. Let's see. Oh, did oh, I was gonna say is Melinda leaving? <laughs> I'm volunteering her. Um, a week from see. this Thursday, coming I, Thursday. I got a phone. Man. Sorry, guys, I got a phone call. Okay, okay. Melinda, why don't you Bye. email me? Bye. Okay. Um, it is next week on. Let's see. It okay. is ten thirty Pacific time. Ten ten thirty Pacific. So that would be what one thirty Eastern. Okay. Thank you. Oh, we're all going to learn how to draw. Yes. <laughs>
That's what we're going to do. That's nice. All right, everyone. And we'll be Thanks drawing just lot, like Donna. just like Leonardo. All right, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you next time. Okay. Take care. Thanks, have a good fun. night. Bye-bye. It was fun. <laughs>